Welcome to episode six of Wine Terroir. In today's episode, we're gonna be looking at the number one brand of Pinot Noir in the US, Mayomi Pinot Noir. In 2015, this brand was sold to Constellation brand, Wine Brands for $315 million. Let's take a minute and talk about Pinot Noir. So Pinot Noir is obviously a red grape. Uh, it is a thin skin red grape and because of that thin skin it is sometimes uh, lower on medium to low on tannins and uh, you know lighter on color. Um, it is often uh, and usually grown in cooler climates uh, it will have medium to high acidity. Uh, one of the things uh, with the grape that most growers will tell you is that it's very hard to grow um, and it's very finicky. It can either, you know, be have issues with frost or things like that. But it can also, um, all the way out to uh, from the vineyard all the way into the cellar when they're when the winemaking pro process is happening, um, any little issue and any uh, that surfaces will be reflected in the wine. That's what that's what makes it interesting though. Mayomi means coast in the tribal language of the Wapu Native Americans that were original. Uh, inhabitants of the North, Northern California area, uh, including Napa. The reason this wine is named Mayomi is that it's meant to highlight the coastal regions of California. So uh, each year this is a blend, and it varies year to year, of Pinot Noir from different uh, several different counties. Um, so Monterey County, uh, Santa Barbara County, and Sonoma County. So let's talk a little bit about um, this bottle. So this is labeled as a California bottle, um, California wine. It's uh, not a specific location uh, since it is a blend of three different counties, uh, Monterey County, uh, Santa Barbara County, and Sonoma County. And each year it varies uh, from bottle to bottle, um, but in the 2016 it's about 60% Monterey, 23% Santa Barbara, and 17% uh, Sonoma County. Now, the goal is that in the blend that each of these counties represent a certain flavor profile, and when they all come together, uh, that these coastal counties uh, make a, a holistic, improved wine that is uh, enjoyable for the consumer. There is a lot of this wine made. In 2015, it was projected to make 700,000 bottles. That's a lot of, that's, that's why it's in the number one selling. This bottle retails for around $20. Uh, making a good Pinot Noir that it reflects its place for sub $40 is very, very difficult, let alone for $20. One other thing I wanted to note is that this wine uh, is labeled as Pinot Noir, um, but by California uh, labeling laws, um, that means that it has to have at least a minimum of 75% of that grape in order to have that on its uh, label. Uh, that means that some years, um, it is in some years, other grapes can be blended in to accentuate or highlight uh, certain flavors that they need. Um, it's not very clear from the text sheets uh, on the Mayomi website about what is actually included in these uh, in these bottlings. Uh, it never says 100% Pinot Noir, but never tells you what the breakdown is. Um, I have seen other wine reviewers on earlier vintages um, call out other varietals that were bottled in there, but I'm not sure where they found that information because it wasn't in most of the text sheets online. All right. Let's jump into tasting the Mayomi. So this is 2016 Mayomi Pinot Noir uh, from California. Uh, this retails for $20 and it varies. Uh, there's certain places you can find it for uh, 15, 16 uh, and upwards of 25, uh, but the average is about 20. Okay, just open this up so we can let me just get a little air. All right, so let's look at the color. Um, so 2016, uh, this is a, you know, I can still read through it. This is a, a medium ruby for me. Um, there is a little bit of a garnet rim, a, pale, a paler garnet rim on the on the rim, which is uh, on the outside of the wine, which is pretty common with Pinot Noir. Again, the thinner skins uh, tend to, uh, the color tends to degrade a little faster than normal, uh, than other red varietals. Uh, normal's a Interesting choice of words. All right. Okay. So nose is clean. Uh, there's a lot going on on this nose uh, in terms of intensity. Call it medium plus. It's all, almost pronounced. Um, a lot of flavors jumping out. Uh, first thing I notice, um, kind of dark, uh, dark fruit. Um, 
uh, red black plums, uh, then a black cherry, blackberry. I'm also getting um, uh, oak notes, uh, almost like a mocha, coffee, espresso, uh, cola even. Um, I mean, of course, wood, um, a little toasty. A little bit of uh, vanilla. I am getting a. I am smelling the alcohol a little bit, so it's coming off a little hot on the nose. We'll see how it is on the palate. Also getting some um, some kind of like cinnamon tree bark, uh, kind of like you know, fresh on like uh, ci uh, cinnamon, um, maybe even clove. Again, most likely from the uh, from the oak. Uh, this, they state this is uh, this wine is aged for, I believe, six or seven months on 100% French oak. I'm assuming this is not 100% new French oak. That would make this bottle very, it would probably make, increase the cost of making this bottle. Um, they do not say what percentage is new or used. Um, and they use the word on versus in. Uh, so potentially they could be using oak staves. Um, it's not very clear to me. I'm assuming they're using barrels and are just uh, have, a, have a volume of them. Uh, again, uh, it's pretty common practice. Yeah, I'm getting kind of like a burnt caramelly note as well. Um, almost like cooked cooked blackberries, cooked plums, like redu something reduced, very uh, sugary. It's not it's not that ripe fresh fruit smell. It's a little, it's it's reduced down. Yeah, kind of brown sugar, caramelly notes. Uh, it's definitely I'm getting more and more of that as I as I swirl. Okay. Uh, let's go through. Uh, let's go through the palette. Okay. Uh, first thing I, um, yeah, I would say it's pronounced on the pronounced intensity on the palette. Just first reaction. Um, there's a lot going on. Uh, the acid level is the first thing I notice. It's um, in general, I'm look. I, I would expect at least a medium acidity, and this is mediumized almost. Um, I don't know if I would say low, but I'd say mediumized acid. I'm um, definitely not feeling um, the intensity there. I think that then segues into the kind of body it's like medium plus to almost full body um again there are styles of pinot that are like this um i think it's uh you know it's it's more luscious um and 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 vel makes it, it kind of feels a little bit more velvety um the sweetness is something there's it's um it's skirting around off dry for me um, I know that the, I mean, it's technically dry I, um, in terms of it's around six grams per liter, uh, which in other terms would be, would be considered dry. But I think with that and the, the low acid, it, the perception is almost off dry for me. Uh, and I've had a bunch of inches. It seems like they're year over year, they're getting a touch sweeter. Um, and it's not cloningly sweet. It's not, I don't think the average person will be like, oh, this is like, this is not a dry wine, but I think it's um, that. I think that speaks to something of the American palate that we're like we want to have something labeled as dry, yet um, in reality we want something that tastes sweet. It's uh, it, you know say one thing, do another, or ask for one thing and drink another. The alcohol is not bothering me as much on the palate. Um, yeah, medium plus, what's that? It's probably just under 14, what is it? 13.7, yeah. Um, tannin. Tannin seems pretty light here. Yeah. Um, low. You know, kind of res not resolve, but ripe tannins. There's definitely there's some there, but it's not. I'm not getting any kind of real astringency um, on my on my gums, and I'm not really feeling it. Um, uh, flavor profile. 
so yeah same similar things i'm getting a lot of a lot of the oak notes um and maybe even a touch of vanilla on the palette um i think like v vanilla cherry coke is kind of what where i'm going with this um you know um so it's got kind of cherry like artificial cherry flavor um reduced plum um like black red plums um that have been cooked down uh blackberries um, maybe in black cherry, but in my mind, a black cherry is even, it's sweet, but it's also sour. I'm not getting as much, um, acidity here. Um, cinnamon, uh, mocha for sure. Um, a little bit of clove. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty bold flavors. Um, I, I don't know how well this will, will age. Um, and I don't, think I would test that not I mean I'd be interested if someone had an older bottle how, how it did um, overall I think this is a this is a, a made wine a constructed wine and I think it's interesting uh, I think it's hit again it's this is mass market this is a this is a you can find this everywhere um, this wine's constructed to hit a certain demographic and a certain flavor uh, flavor profile um, I think it's acceptable in the glass. You know, I would say I call I'll give it 84 points, 83 points. Let's call it 80, 83 points. Um, I think it's well made. I think it's a. Um, do I feel it really represents Pinot Noir? Um, I mean, technically, there's some there's some Pinot flavors. Um, when I but I tend to think of Pinot as something that has uh, I, I, the color doesn't bother me. Um, the acidity, the lower acidity, bothers me a little bit. Um, the alcohol seems a little spiky on the nose and bother me so much on the palate. Um, the really oak dominated uh, profile is a style. Um, definitely some, you'll get some Pinots um, that have that style. Not necessarily what I'm looking for. I would like something a little bit more married uh, and balanced. Um, overall, I think, I mean, I think the finish is quite short on this. Um, I, you know, I can, I can drink this if I was out of a, um, out and it was something that someone had would I ever order this at a restaurant no um, if someone poured me a glass you know I probably would drink some of it not all of it um, again but I think it's if you consider this uh, Pinot Noir training wheels I think it's a great step but if you uh, really want to get into Pinot Noir I think that the, you have to come up in price point a little bit to really kind of explore the depth of, of what the possibilities are for that uh, for that grape varietal uh, and I don't think this does it. I, so I think that it's like, great, I want people to drink wine and I and there's a perception of Pinot Noir being a, um, a classier, more um, interesting grape. But I, I think that um, you'd label as Pinot Noir, but taste almost like what you get some other wines. And that's, and, and when you have this flavor profile like this and this, um, you know, with this tannin, this sweetness, um, and the low acid, I think that's meant just, uh, it's, it's kind of like, it's kind of selling you one direction, but actually giving you a, something that's totally different and almost a misdirection. And I don't, I mean, I definitely it's selling, so it's obviously popular. So, um, who might argue with that? Um, but I would say, um, for me, this is not a representative of any form of terroir. Um, and, uh, I think that there are better wines, red wines that you could be drinking for $20 than this. Um, I, Again, it's, I think it's hard to find a Pinot for this this price range. Um, that's the show. Um, so again, 83 points. Uh, let me know what you think. Um, I'm not trying to bash the wine. I just I, I definitely think that uh, it is something that is consumed a lot, and I see it around. Um, and I think people can be drinking, a, a, you know, more interesting and, ex and expressive things for the same price point. Um, so thanks a lot. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please uh, let me know in the comment section or over uh, Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Um, I try to be responsive and, and, and get back to people right away. Um, feel free to message me directly if you don't want to do a public post. Uh, thanks again. Cheers. Mm -hmm.